Hello, my name is Dimitris and I'm a member of the Urbanism Core team. In this short tutorial, I will demonstrate how to make a submission to our logo generator talents. The workflow you will learn today is a simplified branchless version of the so-called fork and pull request workflow, which allows you to contribute to virtually any open source Git repository. Therefore, I will try to be as general as possible in my instructions. For more information regarding the fork and pull request workflow, please visit the relevant link in the description of this video. This video assumes that you have already installed R, RStudio, and Git in your system, and that you have set up your Git account and local credentials. If you have not performed or are not sure that you have performed any of these steps, please pause the video now and follow the instructions provided in the relevant links in the description of this video. The very first step to contributing to a Git repository, or repo, is called forking. A fork is simply a copy of an original or upstream repo with the exception that it is owned by you. This allows you to work on changes you plan to propose to the moderators of the upstream repo without disrupting their own workflow. You can fork a repo by logging into your GitHub account and navigating to the upstream repo. In this case, I've already done that to save some time. Once you are there, click on the fork button in the top right corner of the page. Alternatively, you can click the arrow next to the button and select Create a new fork option. You will now be redirected to a new page. If you're a member of one or more organizations, make sure that your personal account has been listed as the owner of the fork. Notice that the fork is named after the upstream repo by default. However, since the fork belongs to you, you can always rename it or add the description to distinguish it from the upstream repo. Finally, notice that you're given the option to copy only the default or all branches of the upstream repo. I won't go into too much detail regarding what branches are and how they work, but in most cases, you will be contributing to the stable or release version of a repo, not a feature under development. So you should check this option if this has not already been done for you. In any case, once you are happy with the initial fork settings, click on the green Create Fork button to generate the fork. Once your fork has been created, you will be redirected to it automatically. Notice that while it looks like a normal repo, the upstream repo is also listed in the top left corner. Furthermore, you have access to unique branch specific information such as whether a branch is up to date uh, with the titular upstream branch with the option to synchronize it if it is not. At this point, you have successfully copied some or all of the contents of the upstream repo to your GitHub account. However, it is always a good idea to create a local copy of your fork and register it under version control as this allows you to edit and update source files without relying on the GitHub interface. This procedure is called cloning. You can clone a repo, in this case, your fork, by following the instructions provided in the relevant link in the description of this video. Alternatively, if the repo contains an R project which you intend to work on using RStudio, you can create a new project straight from a version control platform. Once you have clicked the version control button, the new project wizard will ask you to specify the version control system used by the cloned repo. Notice that GitHub hosts only Git repos, so click the Git button. You will now be asked to provide the repo URL. This is simply the link which is shown in the address bar of your browser once you have navigated to it. Nevertheless, Notice that in contrast to most modern browsers which attempt to resolve incomplete web addresses for you, RStudio doesn't do that, so you must provide the full URL including the schema. Similar to any RStudio project, the contents of the clone repo will be stored in a single directory somewhere in your system. Notice that, as was the case with forking, this folder is named after the clone repo by default even though you can always rename it. Furthermore, you can specify where exactly it will be stored by clicking the gray browse button.
In this case, it will be stored in a directory called documents in my C drive. In any case, once you're happy with the initial clone settings, click on the gray create project button in the lower right corner of the wizard. If you want to open the project in a new RStudio instance, make sure to also have the open in a new session option selected. Once the repo has been cloned, you will be redirected to it automatically. Notice that while it looks like a normal project, a GitHub, which allows you to interact with its online counterpart using a graphical user interface, is present in the top right section of the screen. Alternatively, you can use the integrated terminal to execute various Git commands targeting the cloned repo. At this point, you have successfully cloned the repo, uh, in this case your fork, which is interconnected with its online counterpart. Now, suppose you wish to make changes to its source files and update the web copy accordingly. If the cloned repo corresponds to a fork, you may also want to propose them to the moderators of the upstream repo. Clearly, the very first step to doing all of that is to actually make these changes. For the purposes of our challenge, your submission should be a single R Markdown notebook containing your full name as well as a brief explanation of how your code works using a combination of text and short code snippets. In order to ensure uniformity among submissions, we provide a relevant template. You should not have changed any other source files in your submission. Now, let's assume that I'm a challenge participant. I've written some great code and filled in the submission template. And all that remains is to add my name on top. If I now focus on the Git tab, I see that submission.rmd is listed with a blue M marker to its left, meaning that it has been modified. If I undo my changes, just for the sake of it, I see that this entry disappears. At this point, I must confirm the changes I have made with a procedure called staging. This may seem like an unnecessary step. After all, why should I be able to upload them to GitHub directly? but it is in fact quite useful in many cases because it allows you to finalize large, potentially unrelated changes in small, contextually independent chunks. To stage my changes, all I need to do is switch over to the terminal tab and type git add followed by space separate list of the files that I have changed. So in this case, I should type git add submission.rmd. If I refresh the Git tab, I see that uh, submission.rmd now has a check mark uh, under the states column. Next, I must finalize or commit the states changes. Each finalized change or commit must include a commit message, which is a small description of what it entails. Commit messages should ideally be written either in sentence or title case using 50 characters or fewer. In addition, it is common practice to start your commit messages with an action verb in imperative, present mood. To commit my changes, I need to type git commit, add the dash m flag for the word message, and then write my commit message enclosed in double quotation marks. In this case, I think submit logo generator is good enough. If I execute this command, I see it returns a small confirmation message. And if I refresh the Git tab, I see that the entry which corresponded to the submission template has now disappeared. In addition, a message which basically informs me that the local copy of my fork is one commit ahead of its online equivalent is shown uh, in the top side of the tab. Finally, I should update my fork with my commit by typing git push. After a little bit, I see that this command also returns a confirmation message. And if I refresh the Git tab, I see that the previous message has now disappeared. As a final remark, note that while you can stage, commit, push, and more using only the Git tab, the commands I use in this video are platform and software invariant, 
meaning that if you use another integrated development environment for your work, you can still mostly follow along with my instructions. At this point, you have successfully committed some local changes to the source files of a cloned repo and pushed them to its online counterpart. If the cloned repo corresponds to a fork, all you must now do is propose said changes to the moderators of the upstream repo by creating a so-called pull request or PR. You can open a PR by logging into your GitHub account and navigating to your fork. I've already done this in this case to save some time. Once you're there, click the contribute button on the right side of the gray banner which is above the source file section. Next, click on the green open pull request button in the menu that has appeared. You will now be redirected to a new page. There, make sure that the upstream repo, in this case ours, has been listed as the base and that the head repo is your fork. Since you should have already included all relevant information in your submission notebook, you can leave the talent description of your PR as is. Nevertheless, you need to assign someone from the Urbanism core team as a reviewer. In this case, I'll assign Claudio. And you also need to assign the PR to yourself. Finally, you should mark your PR with the submission label. As a final remark, Note that if you realize that your submission contains mistakes, you can fix them locally, state, commit, and push the corresponding changes, and your PR will be updated automatically. In addition, note that you can push multiple commits at once. Finally, note that if you need to edit your PR by changing its style or description or add a comment, you can do so at any time. Furthermore, in some cases, the reviewer may ask you to implement certain changes before your submission can be validated. You can treat said changes the same way you would treat a mistake on your side. Finally, to create your pull request, you should click on the green Create Pull Request button under the description section. At this point, you should know how to make a submission to our logo generator challenge and have familiarized yourself with forking, cloning, staging, committing, pushing, and opening pull requests. This is for the most part all you need to know in order to contribute to virtually any open source Git repository, so please find the time to pinpoint your favorite project and try to practice this newfound knowledge. Finally, note that you're encouraged to discuss all submissions in the comment section of the corresponding PRs. For any clarification or technical question regarding the contents of this video, please visit the links in the description of this video or contact us in the comment section. Thank you.